Hello everybody again, Michael here. Um, well, as you can probably see from the image on the screen, I'm going to be reviewing my BMW today. All right, any, any guess as to what it is, which model? No, nope, not sure? Okay, let's walk around to the back and I'll show you. That's the 116i. It may not be, this model may not be available everywhere, I don't know, but anyway, in Japan here, it is available. That's a 1600cc, that's turbo. Walk around it first. Okay, well, I bought we bought this actually second hand um, a few months ago. We only had it a few months, but it had only done 9,000 kilometres. That was originally purchased by a couple in Tokyo. And I've had it a few years and never used it really. And as you can see, it's absolutely mint condition. And even underneath, it's all shiny, everything. It, it just looks like a brand new car. So, um, But it's a lot cheaper than buying a brand new BMW because they really depreciate so quickly um, I wouldn't recommend buying a brand new one actually do like we did just buy a good second-hand one that's hardly got any miles on and uh, you're going to save yourself a bucket load of money as well so, right let's show you inside that's what it looks like inside it's got this part here's leather as you can see, it's sort of a whitey grey leather, and then you've got the cloth in the middle. You've got these white, these white parts around the hand doors and things, and the dashboard on this console here. And the back, same again. We've got the white, white on the seats here. Now, headrest, grey and white. This is meant to be the sports version, actually, sports model of this car. So it's a little bit nicer inside than uh, the standard. Right, let's have a look inside then. Let me show you inside here. That's the navigation system. It's really tiny. That's, that's BMW's own one that come with the car, but it's I don't know it's about what, th maybe three inches high by probably eight nine inches long so it's quite small it's clear enough as you'll see in a minute but um yeah it's pretty small there's the controls you've got your dual controls there and CD player not that I'm ever likely to use it but anyway Glove box, tiny glove box, you can get a few bits in. You've got your door pockets, a couple of drink holders in there. Pockets in the door here. Now you're not going to get big things in there, small bottles, but um, you can get quite a few bits in there, of course. little pocket in here to hold a couple of bits and pieces in um, the armrest is adjustable so you can bring it out a bit further if you want it's quite tight and compact in here there's not a lot of room really if, if like me you're quite tall it's it's not good on the long journey this car it's right for shooting around locally around the country roads it's very good for cornering and it's, it's quite nippy I suppose but it's not good on a long journey I took it for Last, a couple of weeks ago, on the, when I went to Gaga concert, I, 
I took this and um, when you drove, I don't know what it was about, 80k? It's a couple of hours that took with the traffic and that. And the time I got out after a couple of hours, I was like, I was glad to get out actually. So I wouldn't recommend this car as a long distance cruiser, that's for sure. That's more for just popping down to the shops or having a quick blast around the country roads on a Sunday morning or something like that. But um, but then we only got this really as a second car for just that, just popping to the shops or driving locally. Haven't We didn't buy this as a long distance thing. That's what my Land Cruiser is for. So, um, yeah. But it's a nice car. It's nice inside. The seats are quite firm. They're quite hard. So is the suspension. But then it's that type of car. It's designed to be driven and sort of driven hard round corners and stuff so it's not meant for comfort this car but um yeah right i'm gonna show you the engine now then on here if you can see that, that's the engine to pull the uh, for the bonnet you have to pull it twice no idea why but you have to pull it twice to open it It is that's the engine as you can see it's absolutely spotless it's now done I think nearly 11,000 kilometers but when we got it done nine but as you can see it's just never been out I don't think it's ever been out in the rain until we had it it's absolutely spotless That. Right, let's have a look in the back of the car, I'll show you the boot space. There it is, it's quite a deep boot. It's not no, it's not that big, but it's uh, it's quite deep. But it'll it's good enough for your general shopping and stuff or a medium size suitcase you get a couple of medium size suitcases in okay and well if you fold the seats down obviously you take this parcel shelf off here and then you can you've got these levers there so you can just drop the seat down like that It'll give you a lot more room of course then up there like that and this this parcel shelf can come right out so obviously you have a lot more room then anyway that's the boot space All right, space inside here is a bit cramped to say the least. I, I can sit in here, I mean, if you look at where my legs are, knees, I mean, there is space, I can sit in here, but if the passenger in front or if you're behind the driver, you're not going to have a lot of room, you can see. The seats are hard, so it wouldn't be a very good ride in here for long. You wouldn't want to be in the back here for very long. And that's the air vent for the back. All right, as a front passenger, you've got a lot more room. You can stretch your legs out. In fact, you've got plenty of room in the front. You've definitely got plenty of room in the front. It's not too bad, especially as a passenger. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I've got my legs stretched, nearly stretched right out. Okay, all right, I'll start it up and you can see what it sounds like and whatnot. On here, I don't know if that's typical BMW or not, but the start button is on the inside here. Not over here like all the other cars, or at least all the cars I've owned and currently own. But yeah, it's here. There it is. Yeah. Right, that's anyway the sound and navy system there. And everything here can be controlled by this dial. If you want your map, you just push that and there's your map. You can zoom in and out by just turning this dial. Like that. Like that. Um, 
got all your different things here. You've got your, that's your main menu. You've got your my multi, as you can see there. You go through all the different things. You've got vehicle information. It tells you all about it. You've got your trip computer and everything. You can have your sports displays like that. So if you when you're driving, you move up, it tells you how much power and torque so you've got a lot of different displays on there, uh, <coughs> which you can do and you just simply toggle back, your left or right, up and down, and you can just uh, adjust things as you want, like that, sentence, you can change it language you can uh, this either Japanese or English this is full English as well once you change your English everything's in English including the display down there actually all the things on there come in English um, that's your sound obviously to change and climate you can change your climate your lights doors you can change how you have the doors lock you have all, all of them lock or whatever. You can have an automatic relock, lock after driving away, that sort of thing. So you can, just everything's done with this toggle, with this dial thing here. So it's quite handy in some ways, although you're not going to want to be doing this when you're driving, of course, but um, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. But yeah, so it's quite easy, I suppose. But it's not touch screen at all. So obviously, if you touch it, nothing happens. So. You have to rely totally on this dial. Anyway, that's that. Yeah, you just use that. Um, right, here, you've got different modes here. You've got like Echo Pro, you've got Comfort Mode, and you've got Traction. There's a Sport Mode as well. I found in the sport mode that tend to keep the gears higher, so, you, so you're in a high gear all the time, regardless of what gear you're in, it seems to be a bit higher revving as well. And if you go onto the comfort, that's where I normally have it, that's sort of a balance. You've got this Echo Pro, when you put it on there, it, um, it sort of regenerates power, it stores power in the, in the battery in the back, there's another battery in the back of here, that stores power there, so. Um, Gives you a bit more economical driving. Not that I've really used it yet, much yet, so I don't really know how it works properly, but anyway, it has these different modes. It does have traction control on here as well. I don't know if you can see that there. Where is it there? That one is actually uh, come on the display there. On or off, you can have your traction control. Um, yeah, that's just yeah, display and everything, of course. What I don't like about this is, um, as you can probably see, it's not backlit. Only the bottom bits are backlit. Just a fuel gauge and uh, to show you how your your power and efficiency is getting on, which on a sunny day is a bit useless. You don't need that. You want to see how much fuel you got, and what speed you're doing. But um, you can see it now. And obviously when the lights are on that's going to light up but if you're out and about and you've got a really bright day you really can't see the dials at all it's not backlit which i found a bit find a bit strange but anyway yeah that's that um other than that i've got the dials on the Here on the steering wheel. Well, that one is actually, that's a, I don't know if you can see that, it's a limit. You can turn that up and see that green little light going up. So you can set that as your speed limiter. So if you're going along a motorway, you can set it at the, like the motorway speed limit. And then once you get to that, no matter what speed you have it at, like there, if I set it at 60, for example, you can't go above 60 with it. So it can be a handy function, stop you going too fast and uh, potentially breaking the speed limits. You can just simply 
push that again to turn it off and then here you've just got your mode and that just turn changes your and you can see there that changes all your settings Bluetooth or whatever that, can, that also changes your display settings um, other than that you've got this that's just for your volume and your telephone but that's it there's no cruise control on here whatsoever um, it doesn't have many safety features it doesn't have like um, radar braking no lane departure warning nothing really so I don't know for for BMW I find it doesn't have a lot of anything in here compared to my other cars I've got but um, anyway it is what it is right, let's do a sound check Sounds like when you rev it. It's quite quiet. I close the window and rev it from inside. That's what it sounds like anyway. Ah, this is the for the gears here. Um, it's a bit of a funny thing really. When you want to, to get into drive, you can't just you can't actually do anything with it if you don't push this button. So if you want going to drive, you push that button to go into drive. And likewise, if you low reverse, it has it. Oh, yeah, it does have a reverse camera, by the way. A bit primitive, but it does the job. Um, and when you want to stop and put it in, and once you when you want to actually stop driving, you just push it into neutral and then press P. Of course, you have to have your foot on the brake, obviously, and there, then you're done. When you stop it, it actually doesn't stop. It only stops the engine, so you have to push this button twice to stop everything. So, that's a little bit different. Uh, what else? Oh, right, yeah, it has automatic lights, obviously, on there, so the lights come on when it gets dark. It has automatic window screen wipers as well. So when it rain, they'll just come on. Well, say come on, you've got to push this button, auto. You push that button for auto. And then after that, depending on how hard it rains, the speed will vary. So that's very handy. Um, that's the light switch there. That's about it, really, for this, I think. Um, there's not a lot more to show you. It's... Like I said, we bought it just really as a second car, just a general run around, just to have locally, and, um, and it does the job. It looks nice, it drives well, it certainly drives well. You can, uh, it's certainly nice on the little, it's now it's on the mountain roads, definitely better on the mountain roads than it is on the motorway. So, if ever you're in the market for a small BMW, I would not, and you want to go long distances, I wouldn't recommend one, <laughs> you better off to get something a bit bigger. Um, but if you just want something as a general run around locally, then um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, but it does take high octane fuel, by the way, not unleaded. Some people apparently do run them on unleaded or some mix it half unleaded, half high octane. But um, if you want the engine to last and get the maximum power out of it, you want to stick with a high octane fuel, which is what I put in it. So that's one thing that's going to you need to bear in mind that will be more expensive to run and um, well being BMW I suppose if anything brake parts are going to be ridiculously expensive uh, insurance is also expensive um, so they're all things to consider it it's not just buying a car though second-hand BMWs aren't that expensive even this one which is almost new really it's hardly done any miles and it's in perfect condition but uh, the insurance is quite expensive um so so is the tax for it especially as it's a foreign import for japan it makes it more expensive than a a japanese car so maybe in europe i don't know for example if you have it in europe that may be cheaper i'm not sure but um yeah it's something to consider if you buy one it's not just buying it buying a bmw or even a mercedes you can get some good second-hand ones that don't cost that much. It's the 
maintenance after. Well, this is fairly new, obviously, and uh, low miles, so probably it's not going to break for a while, but um, I wouldn't recommend buying an old BMW. It's just going to cost you a fortune, I think, for parts and things. So if you're in a market for one, if you can, try to buy a, a very low mileage second-hand one, good condition one, and you're probably going to serve you well for a few years. Um, but yeah, that's about it, really. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something useful about this video. And yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll be back again soon. Goodbye.